What's up guys, this is Josh, your Akamai Developer Advocate, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving into a very special topic, and that's HarperDB. And if you're into databases and looking for a versatile solution that combines the best of SQL and NoSQL, you're in the right place. In this tutorial, I'll guide you through the installation and configuration of HarperDB on Ubuntu 22.04. So let's jump right into it. All right, so I'm at HarperDB.io. And before we get started with the installation, let's understand what HarperDB is all about. Like I stated earlier, HarperDB is a powerful database solution that offers both SQL and NoSQL functionality in one package. And it's definitely perfect for developers who need the structure of SQL tables alongside the flexibility of NoSQL data storages. Now to cover a few key features of HarperDB, it provides a built-in API for seamless integration with other applications. HarperDB also supports clustering and data replication, ensuring high availability and scalability. With this fast performance and sub millisecond latency, it's ideal for real time applications like gaming, media, and manufacturing. Plus, it's highly resilient with self healing connections and dynamic schema support for NoSQL tables. And I mainly want to just come to the site just to show you guys a little bit more about it, but I also pulled up the HarperDB docs. So this will get you started with setting everything up. And of course, I'll have all these links down in the description of the video so you guys get a little bit more information about Horper DB if you're not familiar with it. And also one thing that's super cool, which I'll show you guys how to get set up in this video is the studio for Horper DB. They have a studio. It's under studio.horperdb.io. And basically, it's an online web UI studio that allows you to connect to all your different databases, no matter where they are. And so we could definitely connect to our Akamai instance once we have Horper DB set up and running. And I'll show you guys how to do that. And lastly, before we get started with the installation, let's go over to my cloud manager. I already have a Ubuntu 22.04 server up and running. I also have a user account on the system with pseudo privileges. And if you need help with setting up an instance, we have plenty of videos on the channel that cover setting up a instance. So what I'm going to do is log into the server via SSH and we can go through the installation. So let's get started. All right. So I'm SSH into our cloud instance. And the first thing you want to do whenever you install a new operating system is to update it. So let's quickly run through that right fast. And all you have to do is type sudo apps updates. And I'm sure a lot of you guys, if you're watching this tutorial, you know how to use Linux. So you understand the package manager is apt or app dash get on Ubuntu. And so this is just the process for anyone that's new. So upgrade and I'm going to put dash Y press enter. That'll go through check for updates, refresh the repository, and then upgrade any packages that are needed for the system. And I already did it before this, so we can quickly go through it. All right, and so it looks like we don't have any updates and let's go on and get Node.js installed because that's one thing that's required in order to get HarperDB installed. And so I already have a lot of these commands written out for myself. So this will pull down the Node version manager. Let's go down and press enter. That'll get that installed on the system. Good to go. And now in order to get that to work, we kind of have to refresh our terminal so i'm gonna just exit out and then connect right back to it now let's just go on and install node.js and all we have to do is type nvm so no version version manager install and i want to install 18 that'll work for what we're doing so let's press enter it'll go through install node.js on the system and we're good to go it doesn't take long to to get that installed now we have to make some configuration changes and that's only for the system itself like for instance swap and we'll use a swap file and i wrote out like i said a lot of these commands so i won't walk through them i'll just show you it's just using the dd command to create a swap file and let's press enter and let's type in our pseudo password good to go and then now we need to make a couple changes as far as the permissions of that swap file we need to make it to where no one really has access to it. So as you can see, we're changing the permissions. So chmod 600 and then that swap file. So nobody else has access to it. Now we can make swap. So let's go sudo make swap. And all these commands are, you know, default applications that are on the system. So we don't have to install anything else. So make swap, swap file for that swap file, press enter, boom, setting up the swap space, two gigs, good to go. 
And now let's turn on our swap. So we can go sudo swap on and then our swap file. So and press enter, good to go. Now, in order for this swap to come up every single time the system reboots, we have to add it to our FS tab. And you guys should know about this, but it's basically how you control all the hard drives on the system. It's a file called FS tab that's stored under the ETC directory and it manages the drives that are on the system, like all your partitions and mount them in the location that they need to. So you need to put do the same thing for our swap file so it'll come up every single time. And as you can see, I'm just adding a line to the end of the ETC FS tab file that basically points to that swap file. And each time the system reboots, it'll start up that swap file and turn it on. So let's go and press enter there. And, and also there's a couple other things. There's a configuration file and security that we need to modify as well. And like I said, I'm not gonna go through them all. It's basically adding a line there. Basically account name, soft, no file. And let's press enter. That'll add that to that line. And then also we'll add another one to the bottom that with a million and boom, press enter. That'll add that as well to our configuration file for our security limits. And mainly that's just to ensure optimal performance. And if you're going to create a cluster, you need to do this on each one. And that's up until we install Harper DB, which we're going to do next. So let's go on and get it installed right fast. All we have to do is type NPM and then install and then dash G and then Harper DB and press enter. And I'll get Harper DB installed. And this takes a little time. I'll kind of skip ahead so you guys not watching this, but it normally takes a couple couple minutes or so on the server. And it's all depending on hardware and all that stuff to get it set up. All right. And so Harper DB is installed. And then all we got to do is run the Harper DB start command with the options, and that'll get it set up for you. But like I said, I'm going to just create Harper DB as one node just to show you guys how to get started. And this will generate all the configuration files. And I already had a command written out. So let's just hit paste. But it's basically Harper starts. And then I'm just doing everything on one line so I can break it out for you guys. So you guys can kind of see exactly what I'm doing. So so Harper start. And then the next line, there's a dash as TC agreement. This is basically the user agreement. So we're agreeing to, to that. And then also the root path for our database. So this is where all the database files are stored. This is also where all the configuration files are stored. And I'll show you guys that because we need to do a little bit of configuring in order to connect to it from the studio. And then also we need to create a admin user. So that's what I'm doing. I just created HDB underscore admin. And then also I created a admin password. And when we start it, it's gonna ask us for that password again. So remember what that is. I just named mine capital P and then password, you know, and so estimation point at and the hash, hash sign. So let's go down and press enter and then it'll kind of sit here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit enter again. It'll kind of sit here and it's gonna ask us, like I said, for that password again. And so just type it in and you won't be able to see it and press enter and that'll go through the installation of Harper D. And if we scroll up a little bit, you'll see, you know, what all it did. That's the terms of condition. Like I said, that's what we agreed to here. I agreed to the terms of condition. This is the destination of Harper DB which is stored under my home directory. So whatever account you're running this under, that's where it'll store it. And you can specify, well, you can specify exactly where you want it, want it stored, but you want to make sure the account has access to that directory. And then the server listening port, the default is 925, which is what I've seen in all the documentation. And then also that user account, that admin user account I created, HarperDB underscore admin, and then our password. And so as you can see, Harper DB installation was successful. It successfully started. So it's actually running on its server now. So let me start off by showing you a few Harper commands. So Harper DB, we could stop the server. So we can hit that and that'll actually go through and stop our Harper DB server. And in order to start it, you could just type the same thing, just start. I'm not gonna run it because we need to go in and configure right fast. So let's LS our home directory and you should see that Harper DB folder that we created. So if we go up in here, let's go CD and then Harper DB and press enter. And if we LS this directory, you'll see a couple directories. So if we, we ha we're doing clustering, you'll see clus a clustering directory database, which we're not setting up clustering. I just wanted to at least show you guys, it does create that folder regardless if you have clustering set up or not. Backup, components, databases, 
keys. It automatically generates keys for you for a SSL cert. So that's stored in that location, logs, transactions, node modules, and then the trash. And what I want to modify is our Harper DB config. And let me show you guys that right fast. So let's go nano. And since we own these files, I don't have to type sudo, but Harper db-config.yaml file. So it's the YAML programming language. If you know a little bit about it, you know, it's not that difficult to learn. It's a pretty easy language to figure out. Now, if we go down in here, what we're looking for is the secure port. As you can see right now, it's null. And what you want to do is change that to whatever port you want to use. So I'm going to use 9927, and that'll be the port for the secure port. So let's go on in, save that right fast. Boom, boom. And then let's CD out of this directory and let's actually stop and start the server again. So let's go Harper DB. I think it's already stopped. So if we start it now, it should have that port up and running for us, even though the default is that that's the unsecure, but you can still access that port because we added it to our configuration file. Now let's go down and since our server is up and running, let's go down and hop back over to the web browser. And I already had the studio open. So it's basically studio.horperdb.io. And all you have to do is create an account. So you can sign up for free. All you have to do is click here. This will, it'll ask for a little bit of information. So first name, last name, email address, and then a domain. And that's a Harper DB cloud domain. Don't worry about this if you're using Akamai as your hosting of the database. This is just something they have you create by default. It's basically a subdomain and, and it has to be different from these subdomains that are out there, you know, for harperdbcloud.com. And then also if you have any coupons or whatever, you can add that there as well. But let's go back to the homepage right fast and type in our password. And so mine is keep it techie. And then I have a password set up for it. And so let's log into it right fast and let's not save that password. And it's very simple to set up once you log into it. I kind of show you a little bit of it. You can check out all organization. That'll show you pretty much everything. This is my little fake organization. I'm gonna just click there. That's what's created. And then you can add your instance, your cloud instance. You can either use Harper, which we're gonna use Akamai. And this is an easy way of managing the databases. You have something GUI based that you can actually use to manage the databases. That's the only reason I wanted to cover this. But yeah, you can go through this. I'm not going to go through everything in here. You can check out Harper DB's documentation, but let's go down and connect to our server. So all you got to do is create new Harper DB cloud instance. If you click here, you have multiple options. So they have hosting providers. So AWS, Verizon, and then enterprise, which is on-prem on your cloud. So all you got to do is register it. If you click there, all you got to do is type in the information for your server. And so I'm gonna just name this local dash zero zero one. And then let's put in our credentials that we created. And so all you got to do is grab that HDB admin and put that in there. So under the username and then under here, and then we could drop that password in there. We're good to go. And then one other thing we got to get is our IP address of the server. So we can go over here, grab that and use our IP address, that'll work. And then also the port, and that's that port that we put in there and it was 9927. And then click SSL because it doesn't allow you to move forward without that. If we click here, it says can't reach nine SSL instance. So it has to be SSL, especially like a production server that's out there. So all the information that's moving back and forth, all the traffic is secure using a cert. And if we click instance details, it looks like we're having a little issue and it basically takes a while. I don't know exactly what was happening, but it was being held up for some reason. I didn't make any changes. It just took a while in order to actually find the server. So I only waited like two or so minutes and then tried it again and it actually went through it. And then right here, it'll talk about the instance specs. You could just put that in there. That's fine. Confirm uh, instance details if you want to. And then this will confirm the instance details. And all you have to do is hit agree, hit add instance, and it will add it to your account. And this will allow you to manage your server. As you can see, it's applying the license, it's connecting to it. And let's just give it a couple seconds. Now it says, okay, that's the status of it. If we click in there, 
this will take you into that database server so you can create databases so i'll just create one in kit that's fine and then you can start by creating tables and stuff so i believe i did this in the past before just playing around i just use some of the same stuff so that'll create that table for us so let's see you may only use alphanumeric characters okay all right so let's just name the first table kit and boom that'll create that table for us so and you got a lot of options up in here browse query you know you can set users roles charts replication application status config you can go in here and look at the status this is super cool right here config and check out all the information about the server right here and if you want to make changes you can all right and so there you have it you successfully installed and configured Harper db on ubuntu 22.04 on akamai cloud so now you're ready to harness the power of this versatile database solution for your projects and if you found this tutorial helpful don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe for more akamai tech tutorials until next time peace